Commissioner Johnson, how may I help you? Hello, Commissioner Johnson. This is Katie Ellis. I live over on Willow Drive. Oh, hi, Katie. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. I'm calling with some questions about the livestock operation that the Lundbergs are planning to build. Oh, yes, yes. I heard they're proposing to build a, a new livestock operation. Yes, I've heard that their new site will be twice as big as their old one and that the proposed site is going to be down by Willow Drive and County Road 43. Um, how close is that to your place? It's about a mile from our house and the Fergusons are even closer. Do you know exactly how big the operation will be and what they plan to do to manage air emissions? As yet, I don't know. But the information will be included in the permit application. Well, Commissioner, I have some real concerns about the odor and air emissions that may arise from this new operation. You see, my daughter has asthma and can be very sensitive to these types of things. I certainly understand your concerns. Health issues are important to the whole community. I want you to know that the county will make sure that the Lundbergs meet all our regulations. Thanks, Commissioner. When you have more information, would you mind getting back to me and letting me know how the plans are progressing? I, I'll be sure to get back to you, Katie, and, and I appreciate your call. Okay, thank you so much. I look forward to hearing from you. So if you're an elected official or a government staff person, what are you going to do to address constituent concerns about airborne emissions from livestock operations? The purpose of this video is to direct you towards useful science-based information about airborne emissions from animal feeding operations. My name is Kevin Yanni. I am a professor and extension engineer at the University of Minnesota. This video will provide you with science-based information and resources to help you make informed policy decisions for managing airborne emissions from animal operations. Livestock and poultry operations emit odors, which commonly include over 300 different chemical compounds, including ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, and numerous volatile organic compounds. Many of these gases are at extremely low concentrations. Livestock and poultry operations also emit particulate matter and biological aerosols, which include dried feed particles, hair, feathers, dander, dried manure, mold spores, bacteria, and viruses. With all those different emissions, which do we need to be most concerned about? To get some insights on airborne emissions, we visited with Dr. Larry Jacobson. He is a professor and extension engineer at the University of Minnesota and the lead author of a Council for Agricultural Science and Technology paper on air issues associated with animal agriculture. The top four emission uh, issues in the United States I think varies by region. Uh, in the western part of the country, uh, volatile organic compounds are a real issue, especially in the California basin. Uh, here in the Midwest, I think odor is the major parameter because of uh, the prevalence of swine operations. In the southwest, where you have a lot of beef feedlot facilities, uh, particulate matter because they're open facilities, and then if we go in the southeast and on the eastern uh, seaboard, we have a lot of poultry and Ammonia is their biggest uh, concern. Finding a good site for an animal feeding operation is probably one of the best ways to manage odors. Odors dissipate as they travel downwind and with increased distance, odors can be diluted to the point where they are non-detectable or at least non-offensive. Some states specify setback distances between animal operations residences, businesses, and public areas. Setback estimating tools have been developed for some Midwest states. The tools are used to estimate the odor impact of livestock operations on nearby neighbors and public areas. The air quality section of the Animal Manure Management Extension website has more information about setback tools and an archived webinar that describes the setback tools for Minnesota and Nebraska. Odors can be managed using diet and feed management, covers on manure storage facilities or anaerobic lagoons, biofilters or windbreaks. Diet management, covers, and biofilters reduce emissions while windbreaks or vegetative buffers help dilute odors to non-offensive levels. Each practice costs money to implement and it must fit into the overall operation to be effective and economical. Other videos, fact sheets, or archived webinars in the air quality section of the Manure Management Extension website provide additional information about these and other mitigation practices. Sometimes people are concerned about the health impacts of airborne emissions from livestock and poultry operations. 
We visited with Dr. Stephen Kirkhorn about his research and clinical experience related to public health impacts of airborne emissions from animal feeding operations. Uh, for community members, uh, when odors uh, come into their home, uh, they're, it's against their will. And they feel like they're being invaded, um, violated even. Um, and um, then that is uh, perceived completely differently from somebody who lives on a farm operation uh, um, and um, is involved you know, in it every day. There needs to be a balance between uh, addressing the quality of life and health perception issues in the surrounding community. At the same time, agriculture is such a vital industry. It's, it is, plays such a huge role in, in, in rural economy and rural areas that it can't be regulated without a good, a good foundation uh, to, uh, to change practices. Ammonia and hydrogen sulfide are regulated by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency as part of the Emergency Planning and Community Right to Know Act, commonly known by the acronym EPCRA. Industrial and agricultural operations that emit more than 100 pounds of ammonia per day or more than 100 pounds of hydrogen sulfide per day are required to report emissions to the local emergency planning committee. Some states have hydrogen sulfide property line standards or odor detection threshold limits. Ammonia is being studied because of its role in fine particulate formation in the air and the role of fine particulate on public health. Animal agriculture is a major employer and economic engine in many communities. Ideally, regulations balance the impact of airborne emissions on the community and the environment while providing economic opportunities for the animal agriculture industry. Livestock and poultry producers are concerned about airborne emissions from their operations and their impact on their neighbors. In many cases, the owners and managers live near their operations. We talked with Galen Johnson of Grandview Hogs about airborne emissions from his operation and his concern about their impact on his neighbors and the community. We felt that to maintain a positive relationship with our neighbors and in our township that we should be as proactive as possible um, to of odor control. Uh, what we were doing at that point was, was, was the straw cover on our nursery tank, uh, tree plantings. Uh, we had at that point built a sow unit that had outdoor manure uh, storage. Uh, we planted trees around that facility. So these things were in place. Uh, we made it a policy to always inject manure um, into the ground. Adam Zeltwanger works with the Permitting and Business Development Group within Riverview LLP, a dairy that has installed covers on its manure storage basins and uses biofilters. Keeping odor down as much as possible, like right around Riverview here, we have 12 or 13 homes different residences. Some are uh, owners in the business, some are not, some are just people that want to live in the country close to Morris, and so it's important to us to mitigate odor as much as possible. And that is one of the reasons why we did tarps, covers over basins and biofilters over for the gas off the day pits, and we also installed an anaerobic digester on this farm. People uh, in general whether it's county commissioners or whether it's neighbors or whether it's uh, um, pollution control people, they like the idea that you're doing something. And the neighborhood visits, they like the idea that you will ask. Everybody really appreciates that you stop by and ask. Airborne emissions from animal feeding operations raise legitimate concerns among neighbors and the public. Elected officials, policy makers, community leaders and neighbors need science-based information to make informed decisions. Decisions that balance the needs and concerns of neighbors and the community, the environment, and the businessmen and women who own and operate animal feeding operations. For more useful science-based information about airborne emissions from animal feeding operations, you're encouraged to visit the air quality section of the Animal Manure Management Extension website. There you'll find videos, fact sheets, and archived webinars. People considering adopting a practice need to consider the advantages and disadvantage of each practice, the costs, 
and how it fits into the overall operation and management plan while being mindful of the concerns of neighbors and the community. There is no magic solution. Hello? Hi, Mrs. Ellis. This is Commissioner Johnson. How are you doing today? Fine, thanks. Great. Say, I wanted to get back to you about the livestock operation that the Lundbergs are planning. Yes, I've learned a lot, and I'd like to visit with you. Is this a good time? Oh, yes. Thank you for calling. The Lundbergs have submitted their permit application and are planning to have up to 10,000 units, so the operation will be pretty... <laughs>